Hey, today we're going to be replacing the motor on a Honeywell humidifier. Uh, this has been making a lot of noise and uh, some of the blades have been off balance. It's been clicking. First step that I'll do here um, is unplug it and then I'll plug here for the humidity sensor and the circuit. Pull that out as well. You have a thumb screw here on the bottom and you can unscrew that. Careful if you have an exhaust from your furnace, if this is hot, to hold this in place until you pop off the thumb screw. And we're just going to remove this outer cover by shifting up because there's a clip at the top that this thing rests on and then pulling it back. Here's the replacement motor. Uh, I found this online from a company called Bel Air. Um, I'll post the info down in the description below. I'm also going to show you um, this uh, vibration damper. Um, they recommended an April Air version, even though this is a Honeywell. As you'll see in a minute, it's because the Honeywell has a cork uh, damper and it just goes to crap over time and degrades. So here's the motor itself. Part of the noise uh, this thing was making, the motor came off balance. Um, the fan was scraping a little bit on one side here. You can see some scoring. What I had to do was take apart the entire motor after it cooled off and put some graphite lubricant in there, uh, straightened out the fan blade in the motor, and then reassembled it. So now it actually works fairly well, but uh, I viewed that as a temporary fix. Your inner frame lifts right off and you can set that to the side. So we're gonna lift that up. And you'll see here the motor. Then you can take your outer housing and set that to the side. That is still hot right here. So I labeled the wires. You have your ground wire in the back and then you have two power wires that connect to the circuit board. So to get this out, I'm gonna let this rest back on the motor to take off this screw here to lift the fan blade off. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, so you can get yourself either one of these hex heads, looks like a number three will work, uh, or an Allen key, um, Allen wrench, whatever set you have. Careful not to bend these blades. These are aluminum. They're very, very, very pliable. Start that turning just enough like that to loosen this. It's going to be harder because the first time you do it, it's probably been on there for years. Lift this off and set it to the side. You can see here this has been cracked um, and some heat damage discoloration. Uh, try not to tighten this too much. Some of these cracks were already here. Um, this piece is, I have not been able to find this piece online. To replace. If this piece is cracked and you can't glue it with epoxy or anything, you might be out of luck. 11.30 seconds to get these off. I had only put them on finger tight. They have lock washers kind of built in. Now we can lift off the inner frame. Ooh, that is hot still. Wow. Okay, these Rings here are actually washers for an outside hose reel. Um, I put these on last week when I rebuilt the motor because um, they were really the only thick enough and soft enough rubber pieces that I had handy, really ideal. And I mentioned earlier uh, the cork. This was the vibration damper and spacer um, probably also a heat spacer from the plastic um, that came with the Honeywell. I mean, it is fused into the face of the motor. And as you can see, I had to chip away portions on these little wings to get the bolts off here when I took apart the motor. So on the new motor, uh, it's not possible to reuse this. To detach the motor from the frame, you have to unplug it from the circuit here 
I labeled them based on the labels on the circuit itself on the board and it's in their labels here E9 and E10 and that's just so I knew which way which wire was which pull off these wires from the circuit board and we'll take off the ground to help me to loosen this that can come right off now we'll get the other motor out get the spacer just kind of lay it in there that way I'm gonna put the motor in a way that I want these wires to be on the correct side when I flip this thing over. So I'm gonna put the wires facing that way because when I flip this over, I want the wires on that side closest to where they're gonna connect. Spacer stays roughly centered in that gap. Best to come down at an angle, get that one there and then the rest will, the rest will settle in. The nuts with the lock washers back on top. I'm just going to hand tighten these first. Just a little bit here. Now, flip this back over. Okay, so now you have your wires where you want them. You have your ground. Very easy to connect. Okay, get that on there. Once you have everything connected up here, carefully lay this down right inside. And then up here, make sure that the wires are positioned in their channels. Line up the flat uh, side of the motor and attach your fan blade. Careful not to bend your fan blades. Okay, this should spin freely. These little notch and bumps will hold this shroud exactly where it's supposed to go. We'll take the four screws and put this back together. And again, check your fan spin. We're going to connect this back up now. You see on the top here, there's these little clips you're going to hook on the top of the blue frame and rest on the way down so hook that on the top be careful before you let go make sure that it's in there and you'll see it'll just sit right around that frame and then you can connect the thumb screw here and make sure that it has a seal good seal on all four sides okay and then I'm gonna get the plug fish through make sure that your wires are not touching any of the furnace ductwork exhaust or anything okay and then we'll plug this right in and here spin up and that's it minute we should start to hear the water trickle through here as we know the solenoid valve is working so I feel this getting colder now as the water's running through there you go so it was thrown off before but uh, about the fan direction here I thought that the fan blew out and towards the humidifier pad, but really what's happening is these uh, the fan spins clockwise, which is pulling air this way. It goes through and comes out here and comes out here and returns on the sides. Basically, the airflow direction, you're blowing pulling air through the moist humidifier pad in this housing and then it's going back in to the furnace hot air through these two sides which are open you can stick your hand in there I can actually feel air coming out now so here's the diagram 
you can see the hot air in red coming up through from the furnace. It's sucked in through the filter media towards the fan. The fan then pulls the air through the filter and it's forced out the sides where it makes a U-turn on either side of the filter and then is pushed back into the furnace. Once again, thanks for watching. I'll leave the details on the parts in the description below.